Hello, everyone, dear students. Thank you very much for uh, being with us. And uh, I would like to uh, let you know that at the end of this uh, day of our course, we have a great presentation by Professor Dr. Uh, Mohammad Hossein Nekufar. Uh, let me give you a short introduction of Professor Nekufar. He is an um, uh, associate professor of uh, endodontics department, Tehran University of Medical Sciences, and also he is director of in, uh, international uh, relations of Tehran University of Medical Sciences. Uh, beyond a, a faculty member, he is mentor of international rela relations in uh, our school, and especially he's my mentor. And uh, I, I would like to thank Professor Nekufar for accepting my invitation to this panel. And I, I see that you are at your office and I know you are very busy these days and it, it is, it's uh, very kind of you to accept our invitation. Uh, Professor Nekufar, thank you very much for accepting our invitation and the platform is yours. Okay, hello everybody, good afternoon. I don't know, actually, maybe some of you in somewhere of the world that that is, if I, wish, I should say good morning or to some of you, maybe good evening. By the way, have a very good time and thanks for joining us. Before I uh, officially start my presentation, I'm going to ask you to, um, turn on your videos, please, and start your videos, then I feel that I'm between you in a real atmosphere rather than a virtual or satellite atmosphere. Thank you very much. So I'm waiting actually for, uh, okay, the first one is Melika. Melika is now you win. So I cannot see Melika, but I can see she's trying actually to turn on the video. So, so you're the first, but I'm still waiting for all you. I'm in a theater or amphitheater and I'm speaking in front of my friends and my colleagues from around the world. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Noor, Noor is the first one that I can see right now. Okay, can you hear me? I'm this. I think we have problem in connection, I think. Okay, is it better right now? I can I can hear you, Dr. Shakib, but- yes. uh, we have your voice, oh, All right. I'm trying actually to connect to the best way that I can. Okay, hello, everybody. Okay, good. Now I can see some of you at least, uh, which helps me to speak a little more. I may ask some of you some questions and ask you to uh, also turn on your microphones and answer some of my questions. I will start by uh, Nu, who is the first person that I can see his face with a very beautiful mustache. Am I right, Nu? Can you hear me? OMG. Hi, yes, Victor. I can hear you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate your kind and beautiful voice and beautiful shape, beautiful anything. You are really the monitor of Iran, of Iran knowledge, you know. Iran oh. knowledge is the building of the people. And when we are seeing some people like you, I'm seeing like Iran knowledge because of you. Oh my God. Thank you very much, Noor, for a very good uh, compliment. Thank you very much. Noor, I have a question. Have you ever done any uh, root canal treatment so far? Uh, I did two times. Uh, one, one time, one patient come. Good. And uh, the doctor was uh, did mistake to him previously. Uh, he did the root canal, but he didn't uh -huh. uh, fill all the root. He didn't fill. He uh, made mistake and I have the photos in my computer. Uh, this patient coming and he has inflammation in the apex of the roots, two apex of the root, he has inflammation. And he come in crying, he said, uh, the root, my root, my teeth is hurts me. 
uh, we took the X-ray to him. We saw that there is two information, mm -hmm. big information, the apex of the root, and also because of the reason of it, the doctor previously didn't full uh, the comp uh, yani full all of the root canal. At that okay. time, at that so time, at that time, when you start. Okay, yes, so no, when you start doing the root canal treatment, do you use rubber dam for that purpose or not? No, not. No. No. So that is the question. When we don't use rubber dam, there is a big problem because we are in a big danger. So I'm going to ask others, maybe Sara or Nazanin or Abdul Rashid or Peman, either any of you. Whoever is ready, please turn on your microphone and tell me when we don't use rubber dam, what is the danger for that? Somebody help me and answer this question. When we don't use rubber dam, what is the main disadvantage and main... Okay, Ahmed, please go ahead, or Melika, any of you. Ahmed? Or Melika or hello, Ayman? Hello, can I, can I talk? Hello, yes, yeah, let's Ahmed talk first. Ahmed, hi, yes, hi, professor. Ahead. Okay. Okay, uh, okay, okay hello, Melika, after, yes. after Ahmed, I asked the second question from you. Yes. Uh, when I we think don't it, use, when we don't use rubber dam, what is the main danger? I think, Professor, and I'm sure not thinking that uh, when we are not using the rubber dam, we know that like the heart of the tooth is exposed, and uh, there will be some kind of accumulation or sneaking of microbes when we are doing the um, endodontic treatment. So it is very essential as part of uh, basics is to use the rubber dam. Um, because it can come, even the environment is um, like uh, mm. clean, but we know that the microflora of the oral cavity, something can sneak from the oral microflora and it goes inside, which it will um, good, like, make things worse. Very good. So the answer is infection control. So if we want to control the infection and we want to prevent from the ingress of bacteria to the root canal system, definitely we should use rubber dam. Even if we, as uh, Noor said, if we can go to the apical part, the one that you said the previous doctor did, he couldn't go to the apical part. But even if you can go to the apical part without rubber dam, you're in a big danger, as Ahmad said, that you cannot prevent from the bacterial in ingress inside the root canal system. Okay, that is the main, one of the main disadvantage. If we don't use rubber dam, we cannot control the introduction of bacteria or adding some more bacteria to root canal system. Very nice, thank you very much, good point. Okay, Melika, I think, wants to answer to the second question. What is the second disadvantage? Or still I'm looking for the main disadvantage. Melika, go ahead. Um, actually, uh, can you hear me? Yes, but I cannot see you. Um, oh, my mic, my, my, uh, my. Okay, uh, now I can see on. you as well. Okay, yeah. go ahead, Melika. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think uh, the second most important uh, reason that we use rubber dam uh, is that to uh, see the tooth better, to have a better vision and uh, to um, extinguish uh, the tooth uh, from other teeth uh, in the oral cavity. And um, we know that the uh, color of the uh, pulp chamber is a little bit different uh, from the tooth. Uh, we, we want to just uh, have a better vision. Actually, I haven't um, been into the endodontic departments yet. I had just preclinical course in endo, but uh, that's my uh, guess. Yeah, that is the reason, Melika, that you couldn't answer for the one that I am looking for. I'm definitely agree with you that, yes, you're right. When we put rubber dam, we have better access to the tooth, better access to the tooth. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you. But I think Sara is going to speak right now about the third things, or still I'm looking for the one. So, so far, we covered two of them. First, to prevent bacterial leakage, as Ahmed said, completely correct. And as Melika said, 
Again, as a complete answer and a correct answer, yes, to have a better access to the tooth. But still, I'm looking for something more dangerous and more important. And believe and please uh, consider that the topic of my talk is ethical consideration of root canal treatment. So I'm looking for the next one. Amir was saying, Amir was saying, please go ahead. Unmute yourself and speak. And uh, may I ask the moderator or host to let everybody to turn on their microphone if needed. Amir Hossein, please go ahead. I cannot Hi. see you, please. Uh, you can't see me. Yes, I cannot see you, but I can hear you well. Yes, now I can see you, Amir Hossein. Oh, go okay. ahead. Uh, I think one of the reasons to use a rubber dam is to prevent uh, digestion of our instruments by the patient. For example, yes, a file. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's what am I looking for? Well done, Amir Hussain. So thank you. So far, we speak about the importance of rubber dam, as Amir Hussain and Ahmed and Noor said. These are very important things, and Melika also add to that better access, prevent bacterial leakage, and also be careful about to prevent from any accident patients may aspirate whatever we are going to use inside their mouth. So now I'm going to share something with you and show you something very important. So today I'm going to speak about ethical consideration in endodontics. So speaking about the ethical consideration, uh -huh. so what you can see in the left slide, please let me know. This is an X-ray from it is a chest x-ray and abdominal x-ray as well. So what you can see in this one, whoever is going to speak, please raise your hand, turn on your microphone. Abdul Rashid, do you want to tell me what you can see in that? Payman, do you want to say something? Dimitri, whoever. Evelyn, do you want to speak? What you can see in this radiograph? on the left side of my slide. Uh, hello. Uh, do you have my voice? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, I think uh, this dentist uh, perforated the root of this teeth with the pin. Uh, no, 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 I, I'm not speaking about the right side. You are right. About the right side, you're right. But on the left side, you can see a chest X-ray and abdominal yeah. X-ray. Yeah, can I talk? Um, it's a I file about that. Professor. It's a yes, file. Yes, there is a file inside the intestine of this patient. Why yeah. it happened? Because the dentist who used this one forget to use rubber them. That is the problem. That is the problem. So you, as Amirosen said, patient may swallow the file when we use that. So we use rubber dam for three purposes. One, for controlling any material or any instrument that we use in patient mouth. Second, to prevent bacterial leakage, Ahmad said. Third, as Melika said, to have better access. And finally, to prevent from the swallowing or aspirating instrument, which has some legal issue in that. Okay, let's go and see if such a things happened, what should we do? And uh, let me go further. Okay, now you can see another very important images, two images, one on the right side, and one on the left side. On the right side, you can see a lateral X-ray from patient with a file inside the esophagus. So this is very dangerous because this file may go inside the stomach or may go inside the lung of the patient. But what you can see on the left side, can you tell me any of you? Uh, yes, I guess this is like, uh, I'm sorry if uh, you allow me. Uh, I think, yes, uh, please, I go ahead. Uh, I think it is the, 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 the matrix we use when we are uh, using the rubber dam, you know, to separate. Like, yeah, this is I the clamp. This is a clamp. 
Yes. And why it happens? Because sometimes when we put rubber dam, there are two ways. In the first way, we put rubber dam attached to the rubber and we put on the tools. But on the second way of that is to put the clamp first and then put rubber dam on top of it. In that situation, we need to attach the clamp to a dental floss and make a very secure tie for that because it may go inside and patient may aspirate that. In this case, it happens, instrument digestion. And now you can see the endoscopic removal of an endodontic fungus. which is very dangerous. All of them are preventable. All of them are preventable by use of a rubber dam. And now you can see during the corona time, what we use, we cover ourselves, we cover our patient very well, and then we put rubber dam. So now on the right side, you can see me in my office. But you're going to see me, obviously, because I'm on the list of a lot of protection. Patient is also covered completely and patient mouse also covered. This helps also from the spreading the aerosol around the area that we work inside it. So it helps us to prevent bacterial leakage, to also prevent from the swelling of that. Now I'm going to show you a case. And I, again, I need your help. And you need to communicate with me about this one. This patient during the corona time called me. She suffered from a pain on the first molar, first upper molar. I checked the radiographs. I have seen something at the apex of the mesiobuccal canal. So I asked the patient to come to my office and I appoint uh, one over for this patient to work on that. Obviously, in this x ray you can see something else. You can see the first premolar with the caries in the distal part and caries on the mesial part. Can you see that? I, I'm sure you can see that. Yeah. Then we, I asked the patient to join. Patient K, now you can see this upper molar. This upper molar, after inspection, I find there is a vertical fracture. By seeing this vertical fracture, I was a bit suspicious. Can I save this tooth or not? So the reason of the pain of this tooth is because during chewing on this tooth, this tooth bite the gum, bite the periodontal ligaments. Therefore, there was a pain during the mastication, during chewing on something. So I removed the platel, the fractured platel cusp, and I put some temporary on that. Obviously, I remove also the sharp part of the amalgam to make sure that this tooth is restorable or not. Yes, this tooth can be restored by doing a crown lengthening and then make a crown on it. But patient also told me she suffered from, from pain from tooth number four as well, first premolar. So I decide to put my rubber down and start doing root canal treatment for this patient as well. Are you happy now? Everybody is happy. Can you see anything odd or anything unusual in this one? Can you detect any unusual things on this one? If you detect anything, I definitely send you a big prize. Wherever you are, you are going to win $100. Joking. But okay, carry on. I think Mofida is finding something. Do you find something? Evelyn, do you find something? Payman? No? Okay. Sarah? Oh, somebody raised their um, hand. Yes, please, go ahead. Um, can I start? <laughs> can you hear yes, me? Yes, please. Um, yeah, I see in, um, that the filling is over contorated and it is bigger than the occlusal filling should be. And mm -hmm. um, it's very small it, from my side, but I think yep. you should do a, a test if this uh, tooth is still uh, retired. Okay, if it is small, I think, uh, Evelyn, you can use the 
change the view yourself, make it gallery view or a speaker view or slide view or something like that. By changing the view, you may enlarge it yourself. Okay. And then have a look. No, you couldn't, you couldn't find what am I asking? Okay, Noor, you go ahead. Uh, yes, Professor. Uh, professor, you mean in the X-ray picture? Yes. I, I leave an X-ray and a tooth on the rubber dam to you. And I ask you a very difficult question. Something wrong happened here. Uh, uh, doctor, uh, you know, uh, he make filling material in the crown and also- No, he no, 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 you're right. No, okay, Abdul Rashid. Okay, salam, doctor. Okay, know. yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, for me, I think uh, in the this uh, tooth number four, that is a breakage, like there is fracture in the mm -hmm. uh, palatal side of the restoration. So probably this caused some sensitivity to the patient and uh, she complained of pain, as you have said. Okay, still uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't notice what am I asking. Don't worry, let's go further. Okay, okay what I, I did... Okay, uh, Dr. Else? Can I yes, say please. something? Yes, please. Can I say? As I see, the feelings are connected. Yes? Mm -hmm. Connected. What do you mean? No. No, no, no. Okay. It is a very difficult question. Doctor, can I hear yeah. my opinion? Yes, please. Is it the problem in the proximal surface of the teeth? No, no. As I said, I'm going now to do root canal treatment for the first premolar or tooth number four. Let's see what happened. What I did, I put some sort of liquid dam around my clamp to make sure that I don't have any leakage. Then I also disinfect the area by Iodine, betadine, to make sure that I remove all the bacteria, virus, and everything to also prevent from the contaminated aerosol. And then I start doing the root canal treatment for what you can see here. Are you happy about that? Can you notice any error here, any accident here? Yes, there is. If we just pay this? attention, if we be, uh, pay attention, for example, to uh, starting from tooth number four, so there is a still, I guess, this uh -huh. is the, second, the secondary caries or recurrent. It is under or beneath the beneath the restoration. No, and there is no, Ahmed, 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 wait a minute. Have a look to the final radiographs. My this goal. Is hey, may I speak? <laughs> You mean the endodontic yes, treatment? It's the second parameter. Okay, one by one. Uh, one, by one. I guess there is a vertical root fracture. No, 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 no. Listen St carefully. Sorry, doctor. Uh, you, were right? supposed, you were supposed to do the uh, uh, endodontic on the first premolar, yeah, but exactly. it has gone on the second premolar. Who is it speaking? I am Apasade. Oh, hello, that's it, that's it. That was the main mistake, why it happened. Because when I put rubber dam and I ask you, what can you see in this X-ray? That I ask Evelyn, please look carefully. Evelyn, now look carefully. Tooth number five has a, an MO, mesial and occlusal feeling, as you can see but there is no distal feeling. So this is an MO cavity. I wrongly, mistakenly put the clamp on rubber dam on tooth number five rather than number four. Wow. My God, that is a big, big, big mistake. And then I wrongly did a very good root canal treatment for tooth number five rather than tooth number four. I was supposed to do the treatment for tooth number four, not five. And the reason of this mistake 
is when I put my rubber them on the tooth, I wrongly put it on another tooth and I forget to recheck that. I did a very good root canal treatment on five. And then obviously after that, I have to do that on four. I couldn't ask a patient to pay anything to me. And still I paid to the patient some money to go for the crown on four, five and six. And apology, please accept my apology. Please don't go to the court for me and blah, 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 blah. Why? Because I mistakenly put my rubber dam on the tooth which I wasn't supposed to put on that. Therefore, what I'm trying to tell you is rubber dam is very, very important to prevent from swelling, to prevent bacterial leakage, to prevent from a lot of things. But on the other hand, the most important thing is to concentrate on your patient, to make sure that you are fully, fully concentrated on the patient to do a proper job, rather than you may mistakenly do something wrong. That is the first thing, ethical consideration in endodontics that we need to be very, very careful about that. If there is any questions so far, please tell me because I'm going to the next case now. Uh, yes, uh, Professor, I just want uh, to add a question. Like um, you said that why we use the rubber dam. Uh, can I say like as extra, for example, it is very essential that when we are doing obturation, probably one of the like the liquids can sneak to the oral, I mean the, um, the soft tissue and it may damage it because this is an experience that happened to me as a patient and this thing it came and it was like causing some kind of damage but it went well. Very good point Ahmed, very good point and I showed you in, in my slide that when I put rubber dam, I don't put the rubber dam itself. I put some liquid around it, use light cure to cure that as well. Then in that situation, what I did actually, I prevent from the leakage of the liquid that I'm going to use for irrigation inside the canal to prevent them to go into the patient's mouth as well. But what I did wrongly was I put rubber dam on another tooth. This happens sometimes, but we need to be very careful. The most important things, don't speak with somebody else. Don't look at beautiful girls around you. Concentrate on your job. <laughs> Ahmed has started smiling. Be careful. Always be very careful about what you are going to do. That is the most important thing. Okay, good. So we use rubber dam for a lot of purposes, but maybe we can suggest that when you want to put rubber dam, on premolars, you may make two holes, put the rubber dam for both of them to make sure that you can see both of them and decide what to do. Or when you put your rubber dam, check the adjacent teeth as well to make sure that you are on a correct tooth. Or maybe you can initiate your access cavity prior to placement of the rubber dam on the tooth and when you initiate your access cavity, at least you know that you put your rubber dam on the proper tooth. But we use rubber dam to make sure that patient is not going to swallow something. Make sure that when we use irrigation, some such as sodium hypochlorite, which is very, very bad, has bad taste and dangerous for soft tissue and very dangerous if the patient swallow that as well. So also we prevent from the passage and leakage of the saliva to the area that we want you to prevent from the bacterial leakage. And obviously, as Medica said, it gives me a better access to the area. So that was for rubber dam. Next go to uh, the sorry, next one. Yes, one noise. Uh, uh, doctor, before it, uh, when I say to you, I don't use rubber dam, I mean only for this case, not for all the endodontics, of course. And the second thing, uh, one of my friends, he go to the doctor and he did uh, root canal treatment to his tooth, to his uh, first premolar. The doctor looked to his tooth and he said, your tooth, we should extract your tooth, but let's do something. Maybe we can not treat it. He make hole uh, inside the tooth, but he didn't fill it. 
he said to him, take this medication and go to home and after one week, come to me. Is it right or wrong? He go to home, he eating, he drinking. No, this is a very, I would say, old school technique. When I was very young, when I was in your age at dental school, that was one of the techniques that we have, we have been told to use. And we, they called it uh, drainage, but they called it actually open drainage or by cutting an access cavity, we just leave the tooth open for the drainage of the pus or of the inflammatory mediators from the canal. But this is wrong because during when the tooth is open, what happened is bacteria can go inside the tooth and we will be in a very difficult situation when we want to do root canal treatment. These days, what we do, we remove the source of the infection from the root canal system, which is bacteria, and by putting rubber dam, we make sure that we are not going to introduce any new bacteria to the root canal system. We get rid of the source of the problem from the root canal system. Then we seal the root canal system properly to make sure then any bacteria cannot go to the apical site. Obviously, if you like, we are very happy and I'm, I'm sure Professor Shakib is very happy also to arrange sometimes later to speak with each other about this topic as well. But this can be another topic that we can speak sometimes later. But in general, if I answer to your question, I should say that it is better to leave the tooth open when we have rubber dam on that. You may leave it for one hour. That's, a, that's not a problem. But put the rubber dam to make sure bacteria and saliva cannot go inside it. OK. The next case is about the perforation. Perforation means that when you cut access or when you prepare the root canal or clean and shape the root canal, you may create something unwanted, unintentional, and make it unwanted or unintentional communication between the oral cavity and periodontia. You can see now, I have a, an orifice of the canal on the left side, and on the right side, you can see the periodontium with the red color on the knees of that. This periodontium is unwanted communication between oral cavity and periodontium. Why it happened? Because the patient, the dentist who tried to cut a good access cavity to find the canal, you can see the mesial canals on the right side and the distal canal on the left side. And just in the middle, unfortunately, you can see a perforation. So prognosis of the perforation depends on the location, depends on the duration between the perforation time and also the sealing and repair of this perforation. You should repair the perforation as soon as possible. And then you need to adequately seal the perforation. You need to seal the perforation. That means you need to seal the unwanted communication between oral cavity and periodontium. Obviously, if the size of the perforation is very large, it's very difficult to seal it adequately. And then you need to have good access to other canals because you need to clean the root canal system. You need to get rid of the bacteria from the root canal system because the aim and the main goal of the root canal treatment is to get rid of the bacteria, get rid of the microbes, virus, fungus from the root canal system and seal the whole root canal system against the bacterial leakage. So now you can see another case. This is an upper canine. The student who did this mistake, he, she, he or she tries to find the main canal, but wrongly they put the burr and then they perforate the tooth. Now you can see I repair the perforation by a material it, we call that MTA or mineral trioxide aggregate. 
This is one of the revolutionary materials in anodontics, which developed in Loma Linda University by one of the alumnus of Tehran University of Medical Sciences, Professor Mahmoud Trabinejad. He has got a textbook in endodontics, and I really recommend you to read his textbook, which is in English, that comes with a, a lot of video as well. And his book is fantastic about endodontics for undergraduate levels and for general dentists. He developed this material. This material is a biocompatible material, can adequately seal the perforation. Now the canal is accessible and we can go for that. Now you can see another case that I showed you in at first. On the left side, you can see, I'm looking at that on the microscope, two canals on the right side. I'm speaking about, can you see my cursor when I'm moving that? Yes? Yes. Okay, good, good, good. good. Yes. These are the mesial canals. These are the mesial canals of the lower molar. This is orifice of distal canal. And this is the perforation. And the definition of perforation is unwanted or unintentional communication between oral cavity and periodontion. And what we need to do, we need to repair this. And to repair that, we need to put some material here. This material should be biocompatible, not toxic. So this material that we use in this case is MTA, mineral trioxide aggregate that seal this cavity. So I fill the root canal system and I seal MTA, I seal the perforation by MTA. Now you can see my video. In this video, what you can see is the dentist actually perforated the tooth upper central. I find the canals and I find the perforation. I feel the canals. Now I am sealing and repairing the perforation by MTA material. And MTA material is a highly biocompatible material and heart tissue formation can happen around it. So when we have an intentional communication between a tooth, between oral cavity and periodontium, by using MTA, we can seal that. What, but then I put a cotton pledge soaked in water because MTA needs water for setting. And then we put a temporary filling on top of that. What I did, I asked the patient to come back after a week because MTA cannot set quickly and we reopen the cavity and check the setting of MTA and fill the root canal system if necessary. Okay, let's go to the next case. Is there any question so far? No, thank okay. you. If there, yes, please. No further question, thank you. Okay, no further question. Let's check the chat box, dear all. No, there is no question so far. Good. So it is clear about the perforation. Obviously, Excuse me, I have a question. Not... Yes, please. Uh, if the perforation is near the uh, main canal, uh, how could we feel the perforation uh, in the way that we don't feel the canal? Okay, then. Okay, Amita, good question. But before I go to answer this question, I cannot see Amita. I can hear her, but I cannot see her. Maybe she still don't start her video. That's, that's fine. Um, one of the reasons that Professor Shakib and his team actually prepared this winter school is because we want to show you a lot of good things. But can we answer to all of your questions in just two or three days or one week, obviously this is um, almost impossible. But I try to answer to Amita's question, but I invite you all of you to join us for our postgraduate course in endodontics when you graduated from wherever you are and be one of my postgraduate students and do a lot of things about perforation, mineral trioxide aggregate, or whatever you feel that you can do. Okay, let's answer the question. 
When it is very close to the orifice of the root canal, you need to secure the orifice of the root canal by inserting a gutta percha inside the root canal first. And then when you insert gutta percha inside that, you can seal the perforation and then go back and clean and shape and obturate the root canal. Sometimes you may not be able to do that. Then in that situation, you may put some cotton pledge, wet cotton pledge on the perforation side, then go and clean and shape and irrigate and fill and obturate the root canal system and then come back for the repair of the perforation. Perforation can be a subject for our future lectures. Then I'm also happy to help you for that. Dr. Shaki, please go ahead and arrange another time to speak about the perforation, just about the perforation. Okay, let's move Thank to the Thank you so case. much. Yes, okay, you're welcome. Let's go to the case three. Case three is one of the very, very obvious sign of negligence. The students who did this treatment, which is for the tooth number six or lower first molar, that was just a class one cavity by amalgam. As you can see in this, the final radiographs showed the spreading of amalgam in the patient's mouth as well underneath of tongue in the buccal fold everywhere. That's fine. But the patient came back with pain and said that I have a lot of pain. As you can see here, maybe some exposure of the pulp horn happened here. So the student decided actually to start the root canal treatment. Now I need your help. What happened in this case and in this radiograph? Because what happened, they ask for the supervisor. At that time, I was the supervisor. This case happens in the UK in Cardiff University. When I was in the UK in Cardiff University, one of my job as the instructor was to look at the student if some error or some accident happened, help them for that. So this is, a, is one of those cases. So somebody raised their hands, four participants. Okay, good. Below, please go ahead. You can start your video. Okay, and Evelyn, uh, okay, please. Um, Hello, Sunny. Okay, so I think um, what happened was that during the, treat the treatment of the class one, he mistakenly um, perforated the horn of the, of what do you call it, of the pole. So that led to the, um, the leakage of the bacteria and everything inside the pulp horn, that was the reason of the pain, I think. Okay, and what happened now? What, what he can, because then he decides to do root canal treatment and what okay. happened now? What you can see in this picture? Um, actually, there was an error in the filing and also during the filling of the gutta percal, I can see there is some spaces. No, before, before going for that, before going for yeah. that, can you see the mesial canals here? Because this is the mesial canal. Yeah. Exactly. And the, the students try to find the orifice of the mesial canal. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, he, yeah. And he was expecting to see two canals in the mesial. So in, I think he inserted he, his file inside the yeah. distal canal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He inserted the file. There is As you can see, yes, yeah. and he said that because of the bleeding, he couldn't yeah. find the mesial canal. But yeah. do you think, what was the reason of the bleeding? Oh, uh, well, um, I'm not sure actually, but uh, maybe the teeth yes. has also, uh, what do you call it, uh, polypore? So maybe I know that, no, should... no, 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 no. Let's Here, ask I them. Have, I think... yeah. <clears throat> Evelyn. Evelyn, this say? is strict. okay. First, Evelyn, please. Uh, and, I think it's strict perforation. Okay, thank you, Evelyn. You go ahead. Yeah, I, I wanted to say that's an interradical perforation, and that's why it was bleeding so hard. Because yeah, so two of you answer correctly. Perforation at the floor of the pulp chamber, which is here. As you can see here, we cannot see any radio opaque 
floor of the pulp chamber completely destroyed by the student. Let's the have a look at the next area. slide. It was perforated in the forcation area. Yes, yes, completely true. This is forcation area. And also the distal canal as well, the orifice of the distal canal was perforated. And then what I did, I find the orifice of the mesial canals. I find the distal canals as well. So then I secured the canal by putting some cotton pledge at the orifice of them. And because the bleeding was huge, to control the bleeding, I secure and I repair the perforation by MTA. Now it is ready to go and do root canal treatment. But the most important thing here in this slide is it must have been prevented by doing a very, very considerable cutting the access cavity and prevent from cutting recklessly. So you need to have your full attention when you are doing root canal treatment. Excuse and me, as doctor. I said, maybe the good idea is to cut the access cavity before insertion of rubber dam. Because when you put your rubber dam, you may not see the long axis of the root. And you need to see the long axis of the tooth and root canal system. When you cut, you need to go ahead and cut parallel to the long axis of the tooth. Don't change the direction of your bird to the buccal side or the lingual side or distal or mesial because you may create a gouging. You may cut more, which is not good as well. So root perforation is Sorry. a very bad sign of negligence. Any question? Yes, please. Um, how can we uh, differentiate uh, between a perforation and a gouging in this case? Um, how are we sure that it is not a gouging and a perforation, um, considering that we have not seen the clinical uh, aspect of the teeth? We, ha we, are just, um, we have been shown just the radiographic picture. Yes, obviously you're right, because I've seen the clinical one myself. And but when even when you look at such a thing, when because the student approached me with this radiograph, and I look at the radiograph, and I've seen that, oh, and he also told me that the bleeding is huge. You are not going to have a huge bleeding from pulp chambers. It is possible to be from pulp chamber. What you need to do, you need to irrigate it with sodium hypochlorite because sodium hypochlorite may help you to control the bleeding. And then you need to look at that with good illumination in a flight and maybe a magnification and using of microscope as well. If you join us in Tehran University of Medical Sciences, each of our postgraduate students, they have a microscope when they do root canal treatment. With the microscope, they have access to the area. They have illumination because mic microscope give them a very good illumination. And it, they have also magnification for that purpose. Professor, I'm but then, when, when, <laughs> I know, I know. So yeah. try to join us as our postgraduate student. I know <laughs> yes. this is very competitive. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse okay. me, doctor, can I ask you? Yes, the please, Heyman. Yes, please. Uh, when something like this happens, uh, how much is the prognosis of this teeth? Ooh, After fantastic question. Fantastic question. Prognosis. When we have perforation, what is the prognosis? I want to ask somebody else to help me to answer this question first, and then we go, and I'm going, I tell you my opinion as well. Who is going to answer to payment? What is the prognosis of a root perfor of a perforation? Who is going to? Uh, doctor, Nobody. sorry, uh, oh, can yes. you hear me? Yes, please, please. Uh, actually, I had I have a question and I uh, try to raise my hand so many times, <laughs> but oh my God. I, okay, sorry. You ask sorry, your I, question, I answer I, both questions. I think uh, my question is related to the prognosis, but I'm not sure about that. Um, actually, what is the uh, what is your idea about uh, 
um, CBCT in the uh, in uh, a diagnosis of the uh, perforation because uh, I uh, saw uh, previously in the case, but I'm a student. I'm fourth year student in uh, Russia, but uh, this case is for another doctor. Um, it is uh, there is a perforation in the palatal root of a maxillary tooth, tooth and a. Uh, the patient refers to the doctor and he, he had uh, so much pain, he feels so much pain, but the, the doctor couldn't find the reason. But after CBCT, mm -hmm. uh, he found that there is a large perforation in the palatal root, that it is it cannot be seen during regular radiograph. So I think that this is, um, it is related to the uh, prognosis and uh, my question is, what, what is your idea about CBCT? Is it true very, that- Very good it... question. Very good question. Thank you um, so much. And I'm happy actually that Kimia and others and Payman and others, all of you ask good questions. That means you understand my message to you about endodontics and importance of full consideration and full attention to your patient. Definitely good. But the thing is, uh, to be honest with you, uh, CBCT is one of the very, very important parts of the endodontic armamentarium these days. We cannot do our work without using the CBCT in very in challenging endodontics. In all or most of the challenging endodontics, that perforation is one of them, obviously, we always the CBCT with help of CBCT. And when we want to, because with CBCT, we have a lot of layer and we can look at the different layer by a slice in the interval of half a millimeter. That means we have cross sections of the tooth from three dimensions in half a millimeter. So the resolution, when the resolution is very high, we can see every part of the tooth. And CVCT also can be a topic, uh, an independent topic for our future courses, but definitely for the perforation and for endodontics, especially when we have a chronic perforation like the one that you said, we need CVCT. But the question of payment is related to the perforation that happens freshly. The one that you mentioned, Kimia, was not a fresh perforation. That was a chronic perforation. But what am I speaking about, and I think Payman asked, is about a fresh perforation. The best answer to that is, Payman, if you want to have a good prognosis, you need to make sure that you repair the perforation immediately, as soon as possible. The most important variable, the most important factors to have a good prognosis is to repair the perforation as soon as possible. Secondly, the location of the perforation. If the location of the perforation is, for example, is very close to the crest, then you may end up with a periodontal problem. But if it is deeper and it is not close to the crest of the bone, then it is good. So supracrestal perforation or near the crestal perforation, they don't have good uh, prognosis. We cannot seal them properly. But if you want to seal them properly, you need to do that as soon as possible. So the location is important. The, obviously the duration of the perforation, the size of the perforation is also important. You need to repair the small one as soon as possible, but when it is very large, obviously it is very difficult to repair that as well. But the prognosis of the perforation also depends on the material that you use for repairing it. If you use a biocompatible material, or a material like glass ionomer or composite, a toxic material, or a material cannot produce hard tissue formation around it, 
So biocompatibility of the material is important. So you can see, we, I can speak a day about the perforation and the material that we can use. So unfortunately, I'm all, almost close to the end of the session. So I cannot go to the details, but yes, hopefully in the future, we will speak the perforation more and more with each other. Let me show Thank you, you my, oh, you're welcome, Pema. Let me show you the, uh, my last slide. Uh, this is a case that referred to an endodontist and the endodontist asked to look at this case and, the, and do root canal treatment. So the, the retreatment. Unfortunately, the endodontist perforated the tooth like that, as you can see here, and thought that this is a two canals premolar. And then he filled both canals and the perforation with gutta percha. So this is very bad because the tooth has been perforated and maybe because there was no bleeding or not very huge bleeding, he decides to fill the canal and he thought that is a canal and he filled that. Now the case referred to me to decide to extract or save the tooth. One of my lecture is about save it or extract it. Put an implant or save it and make a crown on it. Sorry, audience. I think Professor Nekovar will be back soon. And we are all waiting for him. I know he's at his uh, office and kindly accepted our invitation. Yes, he's back. Professor Nekovar, you are co-host now. Professor Nekufar, are you with us? I think he's connecting to us. This is the technical problem. Okay, I think we have a great class today at the end of this panel and interactive great class. Although this is an endodontic class and I am oral pathologist, but I uh, think it is very important for a dentist to be well familiar with endodontic cases because you commonly have such cases and uh, it is very important for a general dentist to be well familiar with such cases. Yes. Okay, I think we have a problem. It seems that, oh, he's calling. You know, Professor Nekufar called me and he's trying to join us in a few minutes. And uh, I would like to explain for you 
uh, more details about Professor Nekufar because he's well experienced not only in clinic uh, but also in research. And I would like to invite you all to have uh, experience in the researchers uh, that you are interested in, in, in fields you are more interested in. Uh, and also I would like to invite you all to the multidisciplinary approach to all cases and also to all, um, you know, to your um, research. Uh, and also, um, I think you have theses in uh, your course. Is it true all of you have theses, dissertation uh, for graduation? Is it true? How about from other countries? I think I know that all Iranian. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I think you you are very interested in in the Dantic subject. It seems that uh, it, it, therefore we invite Professor Nekufar for this purpose, and uh, and uh, but because of time short. <laughs> Professor Nekufar, are you with us? Uh, yes, I'm trying to use my uh, mobile phone because something uh, completely odd happened for my laptop. Uh, mm -hmm. For my last case, sorry about that. Uh, technical issue for satellite communication is very usual, unfortunately. We had, we so, had several feedbacks from uh, the audience that they appreciate your uh, presentation. Oh, thank you very much. That, that's a very good compliment. Give me more energy. Thank you very much. But uh, unfortunately, uh, I think uh, something completely ha odd happened for my laptop. So what am I going to do? I'm going to show you my uh, PowerPoint uh, through this if I'm able to. Yes. OK. Now you can see this perforation site, which is filled by one of the endodontists wrongly as the canal. What, what I was planning to do, I was planning to ask you to help me and tell me what to do. But because we don't have enough time, I'm going to show you what I did. What I did, I removed the gutta percha from the perforation site. Then I secured the canal, I secured the perforation by putting MTA here. And then I did the retreatment as well. So as you can see, I put secure and repair the perforation by using MTA. And also I put, and I retreat the canal. And then the prostodontist insert his post inside the canal and a crown on it. And fortunately, when I monitor this patient, it is still there for more than 10 years. So you can see that from this to that may happen. And this is the follow up of the patient. You can see that if such a things happen, you are able to do good things at the end of the treatment. Okay, that is now the end of my presentation. So I'm going to thank you for staying with me and hopefully you can join us in Tehran University of Medical Sciences for the future. And this is actually my office. You may want to see my lovely assistant as well. I have two assistants that help me. They are here with you. And this is my lovely microscope. I love this microscope as well as I love my assistants. And thank you very much all and hope to join us very soon. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, thank you so much, you. Professor. Thank you very so much. much for your time and uh, attention to this uh, panel. And uh, I appreciate, sincerely appreciate your contribution and all the students enjoy your a great presentation. Thank you very much. Please stay with us for a group photo. And I would like to ask all audience to turn on their uh, webcam to have a group photo. Okay, uh, while we are waiting for that, Professor Shakib, I want to invite 
all of our friends to our monthly journal club in endodontics that we had. And I'm going to ask uh, Miss, Miss uh, Maliha uh, to invite all of the participants of the winter school for this coming Friday, this coming Friday at one o'clock UK time or GMT time, we have actually a journal club with the author of a very important article. So in our journal club, what we do, we discuss the uh, published manuscript, published article in endodontics, with the, in the presence of the writer of that particular article. Then we can discuss properly with each other and sometimes we challenge the author. So, and we called it a praise to race. So I'm sure Mali here can send all the information to all the participants to join us each month. So we have a monthly online live journal club in the presence of the author of important publication of endodontics. Please join me. And uh, somebody asked about my Instagram. I'm not very active in that. I have a Facebook and Instagram and you can just type my name and find it. Nekufar, N for November, E for Echo, K for Kilu, Oscar, Oscar, Freddy, Alpha Romeo is Nekufa. So you can find me in Facebook and Instagram and just watching my swimming record because swimming is my preferred sport. So you can see how many kilometers that I swim each day. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. I, I ask my colleague to share the, more details about uh, the APA conference uh, on Friday and uh, they will share more details to invite all audience to this great uh, event on Friday. And uh, okay, thank you very much. I think you are all ready for a group photo. Yes, I'm ready for the group photo. Okay. Okay. And these are my grandchildren. Oh, oh, so beautiful. <laughs> Okay, thank you very okay. much. Okay, take care nice and goodbye. Have a very nice evening and see you soon all. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Bye-bye.